Up with Crim begins now. 7.30 on your Friday morning, the superintendent of Washington schools has come out with new guidelines for classes to resume in the fall. This morning, we look through some of those guidelines you need to know before stocking up on school supplies. It got so bad that we finally started driving to Seattle to buy cheesecake. New conversations around racial equality continue to give black owned businesses a new spotlight in this morning as we celebrate businesses across our area. Yeah, you got cheesecake on the mind. So do we. We'll tell you more coming up. It is a cloudy start to the morning. We'll be talking about the darker storm clouds that could be coming our way tonight as another round of thunderstorms approach. Perfect cheesecake weather, right? Evan? <laughs> it's exactly right. <laughs> Bundle up in bed. Nice, small, you know, personal cheesecake or full size, whatever your preference is. Right? Now, my favorite part of this story, Evan, is the Shana Wall Tower, who joins us this week, filling in for Dana Marie Nichols. Shana, you're not a big cheesecake fan, and yet you still recommend this one. I am not, but I think I was turned into a believer, at least for this one shop, when I went to talk with him. It was just, it was, it was like the perfect consistency. It wasn't too thick, but it was still kind of creamy, and it wasn't super, it was, I could go on. It was really good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going we're gonna to hear more all about it coming up this morning here on Up with Krem, of course, along with Dana Marie being off this week, Jen York also off this week. But Evan, Shane, and I are holding down the fort this morning. We do want to start off by taking a look outside with Evan. It's something that's been changing all week long. The weather hasn't been the same two days in a row, Evan. No, I know. We've had a, quite a mixed bag of precipitation. One thing that will be similar today is what we saw yesterday, which is the possibility of thunderstorms uh, just as about the evening hours approached. Now, satellite and radar imagery has shown much of the wet weather is over on the west side of the state and around central Washington. Not much happening in eastern Washington or north Idaho, which is good news to start off the morning that we're mainly dry, but a chance of cloudy skies is pretty much what we're expecting into the rest of the day. 78 degrees is what we'll warm up to. Looks like those temperatures could make their way even to 80 and then past about 6 p.m. That's when we start to see our chance of showers move in about a 30% chance by 8 p.m. Now weekend forecast brings us to 60 degrees on Saturday, 62 for Sunday. Those widespread showers are going to be what we see for Saturday morning before they start to decrease on Sunday. And then as we head into the beginning and middle portion of next week, we'll start to see those temperatures warm back up. We'll see some relief inside. It's going to take some time to, to see that. But hey, spring hanging on for dear life as we are less than 10 days away now from the official start of summer. Joshua, for now, sending things back over to you. Thank you very much, Evan. Of course, we'll check in with you here in just a few minutes. We do want to get to tracking breaking news this morning into our newsroom over the past hour. Spokane police have announced that they are investigating investigating this scene after a body was found on East South Riverton Avenue this morning. You are taking a live look at the area that has been taped off by Spokane police as that investigation is underway. According to Spokane PD, a man was found dead in the 1600 block of East South Riverton. Right now, South Riverton is closed from Magnolia to Mission. And of course, with our crew on scene, we will continue to bring you the latest information as it is made available to us here on Up With Krem. 7.33 now this morning, state leaders have made an announcement that Washington schools plans to be back in session for the new school year. The goal is to resume classes this fall, but according to Governor Jay Inslee, there is no guarantee school will open in the fall. Yesterday, the state superintendent did release some of the new requirements to help shape policies and practices for all public and private K-12 schools. Part of those state guidelines is that they do anticipate the return to the face-to-face -face model in most districts. Of course, there will be several noticeable differences in the fall, even if that does happen. This will not be easy. Uh, there are lots of folks who will be concerned about this and may be afraid about the opportunity. Again, the science will ultimately determine this. Now we do have five major takeaways for you from some of these new deadlines. First and foremost, the school district has announced that student and staff safety is a top priority and, and schools will open for fall. Of course, if plan goes underway for that in person instruction, as we mentioned, Governor Inslee saying there's no guarantee, but it is part of the plan. And if it does happen, physical distancing will be required. Cloth face coverings will also be required, and there will be an added emphasis on having increased cleaning and sanitation throughout schools. Now, Washington School District has also urged schools to come up with strategies to practice physical distancing. We've got an overview of some of the strategies that have been suggested, starting with guidelines that suggest 
cancellation of field trips, assemblies, or any other large gatherings, along with the idea of potentially suspending or making big modifications to high-risk activities. They can also consider reducing the number of students in hallways or staggle, excuse me, stagger arrival and dismissal times. As you can see on the screen here, you can limit cafeteria use as well for specific schools. But of course, one other thing that calls into uh, question is keeping students outside more, whether that means staggering when classes get out or come in, or of course, when parents and students arrive and dismiss from school. Washington school districts are also expected to submit their own locally approved reopening plans to the state within two weeks of their individual starting date in the fall. So looking locally, Spokane Public Schools expect to have their plan ready by August 1st. You can read more all about Washington's reopening guidelines by texting the word school to 509-448-2000. This morning, we are planning for the third Sunday in a row to feature a protest in Spokane against racism and police violence this weekend. As the movement continues to gain steam, our Casey Decker reached out to one of the protesters about some of these specific local changes, changes rather, that they hope to see coming out of these continued protests. Spokane isn't exactly a city known for massive protest movements, but after three weeks of regular demonstrations, it's clear this one isn't going away anytime soon. What's different about this time is that people are ready for change. This can't be just lip service anymore. We need tangible, legitimate change, and we need that swift, and we need that now. So what kinds of changes do protesters want? Specifically, what do they want to see right here in Spokane? Well, Dustin Jolly, one of the protesters, says there are a couple of immediate goals. One, rejecting the proposed contract with Spokane's police union. It's up for a vote on Monday, but has received widespread criticism for its accountability structures. Specifically, opponents believe the contract leaves the ombudsman, the watchdog, too weak. Also on the list, preventing the killology training course from taking place. That's a seminar are the county sheriff's office is planning to provide preparing deputies for if they have to shoot someone. The protesters argue it only enforces a focus on violence rather than protection by police. The sheriff has said he'll consider calling off the training if after a community meeting there's still significant opposition, but many just want him to cancel it right now. But there's a broader issue as well. What most of the protesters are hoping for is a fundamental restructuring of the way policing works in Spokane. We want to convert our authoritarian police officers into peace officers. Their training needs to consist of mental health training as well as EMT training um, and the authoritarian stuff that comes after that um, needs to be redesigned and reprogrammed um, because we need a police force with civilian oversight that is for the people, by the people. That starts with the union contract, but expands into brand new review boards and expanded training to include mental health and more advanced medical procedures. And it's all rooted in changing the basic way people look at police, not as agents of force, but of community service. And when we look about how a police officer is trained, we're only looking at a small amount of time that they go through training and then we're putting a deadly weapon in their hand. There are demonstrations planned on Sunday afternoon and on Monday at City Hall, the day the City Council will vote on that police contract. In Spokane, Casey Decker, Krem 2 News. Thank you very much, Casey. 738 now this morning as parents around Washington have been working to repeal a sex education bill that was passed into law earlier this year. Today, they are one step closer because after gathering a number of signatures, Washington's sex education bill will now be put on the ballot in November. Shana Waltower joins us this morning with a refresher on the bill as well as some of the opposition to it. Shana. Yeah, that's right, Joshua. The group Parents for Safe Schools gathered 260,000 signatures on their petition. It's to allow voters to decide the fate of the sex ed bill. Now, they only needed half that number to get the bill on the ballot. The bill made sex education a requirement it made a requirement statewide. Every public school in the state is to provide a comprehensive sexual health education to each student by the 2022-23 school year. The first lessons start in kindergarten. The bill sponsor, Senator Monica Stonier, says those lessons would be good, would be just about good and bad touching and the difference between boys and girls' bodies. 
Now, when it was first introduced, the bill drew strong opposition from some parents. In fact, there were multiple protests right here in Spokane. We're especially concerned for our youngest students um, where they're being introduced to um, details uh, explicitly that, that are above them developmentally. However, Representative Stonier says many of the fears that parents have about the bill aren't exactly based on facts. What they are concerned about, unfortunately, is largely misled by things people think we are going to do. We are already teaching this in 65% of our elementary schools. But still, many parents said they don't want the government regulating these standards. Because it's not representative of the way we want our children taught about this sensitive topic. So voters will make the ultimate decision on this statewide sex ed bill come time for no voting in November. Joshua. And of course, Shana, when that happens, we will keep our eyes closely on that situation as well. Thank you very much. We have more coming up here on Up With Cram. It got so bad that we finally started driving to Seattle to buy cheesecake. And coming up, we continue conversations surrounding racial equality and given black owned businesses a spotlight. And of course, as you see here, we're gonna celebrate one local business after the break. It's for those of you that love sweets, plain and simple. Come back, check it out. <laughs> 